Good morning and welcome to Washington National Cathedral and St. Mary's Chapel on this Friday, September 25th. My name is Patrick Kieser and it is my joy to be with you this morning for this service of prayer. God is spirit and those who worship must worship in spirit and in truth. Hear these words from Psalm 144. Blessed be the Lord, my rock, who trains my hands to fight and my fingers to battle, my help and my fortress, my stronghold and my deliverer, my shield in whom I trust, who subdues the peoples under me. O Lord, what are we that you should care for us, mere mortals that you should think of us? We are like a puff of wind. Our days are like a passing shadow. Our reading this morning comes from the book of Ecclesiastes, the third chapter, beginning at the first verse. For everything there is a season, and a time for every matter under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck up what is planted, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to throw away stones and a time to gather stones together, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to seek and a time to lose, a time to keep and a time to throw away, a time to tear and a time to sow, a time to keep silence and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time for war, and a time for peace. What gain have the workers from their toil? I have seen the business that God has given to everyone to be busy with. He has made everything suitable for its time. Moreover, he has put a sense of past and future into their minds, yet they cannot find out what God has done from the beginning to the end. This morning we hear from the book of Ecclesiastes, which I would guess is a portion of scripture that we don't engage with very frequently. It's part of the poetic and wisdom books of the Hebrew Bible. It's not very long, and the best way to experience it is just by reading it in one sitting. The author is usually called the teacher or the gatherer, though the Hebrew word used is one we don't really know the meaning of. In this case, the author seems to be one who is gathering wisdom, but the wisdom found in the book of Ecclesiastes was not always viewed as favorable by religious authorities. Its place as part of the canon of Scripture was debated as late as the second century CE, after the earthly life of Jesus. Now, the passage we've just heard this morning is one of the more well-known from this book, sometimes read at funerals. And it reflects the wider themes that are found throughout all 12 chapters of the book. The author is confounded by the sense of injustice observed in the world. It is vanity that there are righteous people treated according to the conduct of the wicked, and there are wicked people treated according to the conduct of the righteous. A repeated refrain heard throughout the book is, all is vanity, meaning that all is fleeting and passing away. Both the righteous and the wicked will, in the end, meet death. But I think the real source of confusion, and at times anguish, for the author of Ecclesiastes is the inability to understand why things happen the way they do. Similar concerns have occupied the minds of faithful people throughout the ages. Why do bad things happen to good people? Why is there suffering in the world? The author of Ecclesiastes answers these deep questions by reminding us what the prophet Isaiah also tells us. Our thoughts are not like God's thoughts and our ways are not like God's ways. Ecclesiastes tells us God has put a sense of past and future in our minds, 
yet we cannot find out what God has done from the beginning to the end. In short, we cannot fully know or understand the ways of God, and that frustrates us. That frustration can lead us to argue with God, which I would suggest is a spiritual exercise of some use at times. For as the author tells us, there is a time for everything. God is ultimately a mystery beyond our wildest understanding. Ecclesiastes is right. We will never fully understand God, no matter how hard we try. That might indeed frustrate us, but our faith also teaches us that there are certain things we do know about God. We know that God is good, that God loves us fiercely, loves us so much to have sent God's very self in Jesus. We also know, and this I think must be good news for all of us, that as Ecclesiastes tells us, for everything there is a season. It was quite a long list that was read, but I imagine some of those are hitting closer to home than others in the present moment. Now is indeed a time for weeping, a time for mourning, a time to refrain from embracing. The good news, though, is that this season will pass. And then comes the season of laughing, of dancing and embracing. This season and moment we are living through will not last forever. The ways of God might be unknown and a mystery to us, but we trust that God is always good and faithful. As the psalmist puts it, Weeping may spend the night, but joy comes in the morning. Amen. And now I invite you to join me in praying the words that our Savior Christ taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Now let us join our voices together in prayer. For the unity of the church in witness and proclamation of the gospel, for this cathedral church, and for all who worship and serve here, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace and stability of all peoples, and for the leaders of the nations, that they may be filled with wisdom to govern for the good of all people. Let us pray to the Lord. For places of work, education, and leisure, for a blessing on this day ahead, let us pray to the Lord. For a blessing on our homes, for our friends and family, and all whom we love, let us pray to the Lord. For the sick and suffering, and all who minister to their needs, especially those sick with the coronavirus, let us pray to the Lord. For all who have died, and for all those who mourn, let us pray to the Lord. And now in the silence to follow, I invite you to offer your own prayers. Grant us, Lord, not to be anxious about earthly things, but to love things heavenly. And even now, while we are placed among things that are passing away, to hold fast to those that shall endure. 
through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now may Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you and keep you this day and always. Amen.